Good morning. Hashur, the false prophet, struck Jeremiah and put him in the stocks. What happened next? Our reading today is from Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 1 to 6. Now Pashur, the son of Emir, the priest, who was also the chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Pashur smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that Pashur brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, The Lord hath not called thy name Pashur, but Megor Misabib. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city, and all the labors thereof, and all the precious things thereof, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give into the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them, and take them, and carry them to Babylon. And you, Pashur, and all that dwell in your house shall go into captivity, and you shall come to Babylon, and there you shall die, and shall be buried there, you and all your friends to whom you have prophesied lies." So God renamed Pashur. He gave him the name Magor Misabib, which means fear on every side. Not only would God clean out all the false prophets, but he'd have them carried away to Babylon where they would die. All the wealth of Jerusalem, all of its favorite things, all of its best things would all be carried away to Babylon and be consumed there. Now, why would God do this to Pashur? Well, the reason is given that because he prophesied lies. He'd been a false prophet. Now, living life as a false prophet has its conveniences. You know, you do what you're expected to do. You follow the line that the government gives you, and you get to do whatever you want to keep having your stuff. You know, say what the authorities want you to say, and you get your pitas, and you get your grapes, and you're good to go. But you're prophesying lies, and you're inhibiting God's work by putting out this falseness out there. And so, you know, there's going to come a reckoning for that. And for Pasher, the reckoning is coming right here. And you're basically putting yourself in competition so that the people will potentially believe you instead of God. When you're a false prophet, you're leading people off to destruction. So we have to put your words up against God's words side by side with what the Bible says and compare. We've got to compare what you're saying. Usually the false prophet is giving you a smooth, easygoing message, peace and safety type message. And usually the true prophet's giving you the stronger message, the message which means you need to repent, you need to change something. You need to put those messages side by side. God calls us to weigh the words of those who claim to be his servants, his prophets. So we do that by comparing their words with what God has previously said and seeing how well they match up. I mean, it's true, God is always free to do something new, but he's very consistent with what he has said before, isn't he? You and I, we need to familiarize ourselves with the Bible so that we can know what statements are true and what Statements are false statements from the prophets, the so-called prophets, the so-called preachers and servants of God. Many of them are preaching honestly a message that is God's message. Praise the Lord. Some of them aren't, and so the Bible's our tester. In the book of Romans, we learn that God is opposed to those who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, Romans chapter 1. And Pasher and these guys have been suppressing Jeremiah's preaching, Jeremiah's prophetic preaching. And so now that's what he's up against. Now, when Jeremiah's released, is is he going to suddenly give a softer message? No. Jeremiah's message is just as strong and stern as before Pasher put him in the stocks. Friends, God's faithful servants, they never back down. So let's us seek to be faithful servants of the Lord Most High. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right We want to be able to even tell whether uh, something is a true message from you or a false message coming in. We'll only know that, Lord, as we get into the Bible. Help us to be in the Bible every day, every day, Lord, without fail. Help us to be reading our way through all the time so that when a strange message comes to us from one that we, we want to believe, we want to think their message is from you, we'll be able to test it based on your words. Lord, this is our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. Make sure you're following what God truly has for you, the true prophets. God be with you.